My name is Tosin Abasi. I play guitar for Animals as Leaders. Um, I mainly play seven and eight string guitar. Uh, I think my style of playing is pretty much a mixture of uh, metal, jazz, and classical guitar, um, all incorporated onto extended range guitar. So. I started playing seven string because I joined a metal band and they had a lot of songs that were on detuned uh, six string guitars, but um, it was like a logical decision to start playing those songs on seven strings. And so um, through learning their material, I kind of fell in love with having, you know, the added range. Um, and then becoming more familiar with the seven string left me feeling like I could move to even an eight string guitar and, and come up with even newer ideas, approaches. Animals as Leaders is myself, um, another guitar player, Javier Reyes, and uh, Naveen Copperwise on drums. So we're a trio. Um, right now we've only done U.S. dates, um, just pretty much every you know major cities in the in in the country, uh, everywhere from you know House of Blues to like a VFW hall. <laughs> When I write, I think it's, it's usually a spontaneous uh, occurrence. Um, so I'll get on the instrument and my hands almost just start doing something. And usually uh, if it's like, you know, a worthwhile phrase or riff, I'll, I'll refine it and start, you know, thinking consciously about what would come next. But I don't approach um, writing from like a, a very um, intellectual standpoint. Like I don't choose a key or think about diatonic like harmony and modulations and things like that. It's more of a spontaneous sort of thing. So, Preparation for p playing the song, you know, you develop it past the guitar, so you think of supplementary um, parts, you know, what the rhythm guitar player would be doing. You think of um, also what the drummer would be doing. Uh, I do a little bit of, you know, drum programming, so it helps me develop, you know, riffs past the just the guitar-oriented stage. Um, but beyond that, it's, uh, I mean, it starts on the guitar and then kind of expands beyond that. I don't have a, um, a very structured approach to practice, although I feel like it's beneficial to have one. Um, I generally like will fixate on particular techniques or ideas, and, and that'll be represented in my, my practice, you know, at, at any given you know, week or month. So if I get a really good like, you know, jazz album, I might be more interested in working on new chord voicings or maybe there's like, you know, a new shred album that's out and that's inspiring me to work on a bit more speed and technical facility. Um, or maybe I'm into a very vocal album and I'll try to emulate certain characteristics of singing, you know, through my guitar playing. But uh, I guess I've taken a more creative approach to guitar because I've been playing for 15 years and have done a lot of uh, dry metronome based, uh, you know, technical practice. So now I think I'm more concerned with uh, evoking feeling through the instrument. So feeling something when I play or when I write. So yeah. I had a friend who played guitar and uh, I decided that I wanted one too and I asked my dad and uh, he was totally down to buy me one and it was like a cheap uh, Stratocaster knockoff. I think it was called like a Saturday Night Special or something like that. And I didn't even know how to tune the thing. Um, I even remember it was a revelation that when you moved your finger like up the neck, the notes got higher in pitch. Like I didn't know that. Um, so pretty much, I was playing whatever I was listening to, which was like uh, Green Day and Nirvana and uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Like pretty much, like this was the height of alternative music. So I was uh, pretty heavily into bar chords, and that was like represented quite a few years of my my guitar playing. Um, fortunately enough. Well, fortunately for me, my band is actually based off of my particular brand of creativity on the guitar, so I don't have to really censor myself or th think within parameters of a genre. Um, and I guess people like it. So um, I kind of have like a no holds barred ap approach to, to writing. Like, um, I'll try anything, and it doesn't have to be metal. Um, but yeah, I think it kind of comes out eventually sounding pretty metal. But uh, yeah, as far as, uh, I kind of forget the question. You said whatever. <laughs>
<laughs> what are your uh, what, what are the challenges, challenges. That, you, that you face with with creativity? Yeah, creativity, the music industry. I think, you know, individuality in the in the music industry is either something that, you know, fosters a career or is um, constantly um, suppressed based on, you know, the musical context you're playing in. In my case, you know, my band is kind of based off of everything that I write and so I'm, you know, able to be as creative and as free as I want to be. So I don't really face any, any challenges creatively. I guess they'd be my own limitations, but even with that, you know, I'm just pushing my own envelope for creativity and newer ideas. But yeah, no real challenges. Man, it was quite a few. I mean, I can limit it to guitar players. Um, obviously, like in the earlier days, I think, you know, Kurt Cobain was like pretty, pretty important musical mind in, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, beyond songwriting, um, I started to fixate on actual uh, technical facility on the guitar. So there's guys like Paul, Gil Paul Gilbert, uh, obviously Steve Vai or um, John Petrucci was like a huge influence um, as far as just like developing fundamentals technique wise to not necessarily emulate his sound but uh, just to develop your own sound with a good foundation you know foundational approach to guitar playing. Um, also guys like Greg Howe who's like an extremely musical you know shredder. Um, I've currently shifted gears from like more electric guitar, you know, playing to more of like the post-bop, uh, bebop sort of guys, like uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel would probably be my biggest like jazz guitar influence. Also, Adam Rogers is a huge influence. Um, but even guys like Guthrie Govan who are just like championing like, you know, that, that really direct like rock guitar virtuoso sort of thing. You know, as you develop more, you know, facility on the instrument, you're able to express a wider variety of musical ideas. So, you know, earlier on, I was probably limited by what I could do on the instrument. And then once you're able to do more, you might, you know, suffer from doing too much. So I think um, my music has evolved the way my hands have evolved, as well as my um, understanding of music in harmony. Um, going to school kind of opened up my eyes, like, harmonically just stretching my ear through jazz, being able to, to reach for notes that weren't obvious before, or having an inclination to, to go for, you know, melodies that aren't obvious, or, um, so guys like Holdsworth and stuff like that have totally pushed my ear in that direction. As far as where I see my music going, I'd like it to be like less genre specific and more of just like an individual expression of music that like hopefully someone who listened to metal or jazz or electronica would be into, or even if you don't play an instrument at all, you would still find some sort of, um, some sort of, something to grab you. So that's kind of where I want my music to go. Um, I am primarily self-taught. I uh, used to buy REH and Hot Licks videos of like hair metal guitar players, like in Paul Gilbert's videos and, uh, you know, Frank and Bali, Yngwie Malmsteen. There was definitely like a wealth of like resources from the late, you know, mid to late 90s, um, or early to mid 90s. So those guys were kind of like my teachers, you know, you could watch the video as many times as you want and just rewind it. But it was usually just technique based, so I didn't have a theoretical background to music until I went to um, the Atlanta Institute of Music, where um, I kind of got a, a broad um, education in uh, classical and jazz guitar as well as just general, like harmony, and, um, you know, playing in multiple genres. So. Yeah, that's probably the extent of my music education, but it gave me the tools to kind of keep growing. I can, I can, I can play the drums to like a pretty basic degree, um, but guitar is like the only instrument I would tell someone that I, I played. Like, I, I started off on the clarinet, but that was like in the fourth grade, so uh, I think I should buy a clarinet though and see what I happens. Played, I played clarinet in really? school, yeah. Clarinet's like the, the, the beginning for a lot of <laughs> musicians. So, uh, yeah, it's just the guitar. Hmm, important piece of advice. To a developing guitar player, I think with learning any new piece of information on the guitar, um, you definitely want to 
start off slow and um, specifically with muscle memory, like, you know, repetition at a slow pace, I think, is the most direct way to, um, to really ingrain it into your hands. And that way uh, to develop more speed is just going to be like a sim simple matter of just playing faster. But you've already um, laid the groundwork of cleanly and accurately, you know, producing whatever notes. So don't feel, uh, don't be hesitant to, to try things slow and, and repetitively. Um, I think it's kind of the best way to approach new, new, new information. It's like pretty much, man, I used to just play with a pick and then learning classical guitar, um, I developed, you know, multiple finger facility, you know, um, and then having extended range allows you to kind of emulate bass. So like I'm developing this weird hybrid style of like, just like this thing that doesn't sound like guitar and it doesn't sound like bass and it's kind of just like, I don't know. That sort of thing, you know? Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I could totally do some lessons on, on that stuff too. Which, oh yeah, definitely. Which is kind of like, I don't know any other guitar players doing it. Like, um, So yeah. I mean, you're one of you're an example of somebody that's using, uh, you know, a style of picking that's probably not prevalent in necessarily the quote-unquote genre that you play in. But obviously, you make it work. Uh, you make it work for you, and it sounds just nuts. Sounds pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's... yeah so I don't know. I think um, yeah, you shouldn't avoid any technique because it's another vehicle of expression. You know, I mean. So personally, I, yeah, I try to use every technique that I learn and incorporate into music for sure. The uh, finger style stuff is definitely kind of like new for me too, so I'm still like developing new approaches with that, and which is pretty cool, you know. What am I learning right now? Um, I'm not actively, well, I think I'm trying to incorporate more uh, chromaticism and sort of, um, you know, encircling chord tones, kind of like a, bebop influenced phrasing into my lead work um so i'm kind of listening to a lot of you know horn solos and stuff like that i'm also trying to work on my improvisation you know over chord changes or pretty difficult chord changes as well so i usually just loop a chord progression and try to to you know make coherent phrases um based on those chords or you know incorporate newer you know chromatic ideas that i've been like messing with that's kind of where i'm at right now so with this artist series, I hope to kind of expose um, ways of using these techniques and you know the added you know two strings on a eight string guitar or if you're playing seven string guitar, just ways to utilize the extra range and actually use these techniques in in actual music, which can be tough sometimes. Um, so we'll be looking at a lot of my songs from the Animals as Leaders album, as well as just uh, exercises that I've kind of developed based on playing seven and eight string guitar chord voicings as well, um, inversions, things like that. So yeah, this is Tosin Abasi with jamplay.com. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs>